Nowhere in America are people more divided than in the prison system. Racial segregation still firmly exists and prisoners will only associate with members of their own race. Basic survival instincts mean violent inmates turn to tribalism and only grouping with people like them. People of their own kind, their own culture and their own skin colour. If not, gang members of that race will kill them for being a race traitor. You're going to be part of our people. You have no choice. Okay. You're going to be white. You're going to be in this gang. And that's it. What if I just say I'm going to go hang out with the black dudes or the Mexican no, dudes? No, that ain't happening either. They won't let me anywhere the, the near The blacks them. won't even let you. Like No one's going to let you. It's segregated. The blacks are over here. They split up into their own cars. Uh, you know, Bloods and Crips. The whites, the, the whites, Pices and Southsiders are on one side of the building. Okay. One side of the day room. So the prison itself is segregated. It's split, yeah. It's, it keeps it safe. It's political. These are the politics. Like I can police my people. You police your people. If you control your people, I'll control my people. That's the only way it works. And that's that's the only way like a, a black can't prey on a white. A white can't go can just start a fight with an Asian. They're all they're all gonna jump. If you come start a fight with a white guy, they're all jumping. Of course, in the real world, this type of bigotry would be totally unacceptable. But prison rules are prison rules. And in the prison system, the Caucasian is the minority. Any theory of white privilege absolutely dies within these walls. The racial tension of the late 1960s would birth the Aryan Brotherhood into existence. Black prisoners oppressed and fighting for racial equality on the street would target white inmates inside. In California, white inmates would begin to fight back by forming their own prison gangs to rival the Mexican Mafia and the Black Guerrilla family. The Nazi lowriders were among the first white prison gangs. Unsurprisingly, they held white supremacist beliefs. However, in Folsom and San Quentin, the fiercest alliance would be made between white Irish bikers. That gang would start as Diamond Tooth, then Bluebird, and finally the Aryan Brotherhood. This gang would protect the white prison populace. Although heavily outnumbered in prison, the gang did not recruit just anyone. Strict initiations meant only the most violent and most fearless could join. The motto was blood in, blood out. A member would have to make a rival bleed to join, aka getting blood on your steel. This also means it is impossible for undercover police to infiltrate the gang. The only way out of the gang is death. The brand is to mean more than anything to a member. More than God, more than family, more than himself. The gang distinguished themselves in the prison system by their reputation of violence. With every attack they would ensure maximum viciousness was maintained. Though heavily outnumbered by rivals, they began to be feared. Other gangs knew if they killed one of the Brotherhood, the AB would kill two of theirs. They created a psychology of fear. For example, it was calculated that although the group made up less than one tenth of one percent of the prison populace, they were responsible for 18 percent of the murders. Prison officers would also be at the mercy of the gang. The highly organized group found ways to unlock handcuffs leaving them free to attack guards. For example, a member named Tommy Silverstein stabbed Officer Merrill Klutz to death. On this one day in 1983, two prison officers were killed by members of the AB, making it a first in the federal prison system. The other AB member named Clayton Fountain killed Robert Hoffman and assaulted two other guards as he did not want Silverstein to have a higher body count than him. High-ranking members began to be moved into Supermax isolation prisons 
where they were isolated 23 hours a day. However, ingenious forms of coded communication has allowed orders to continue. Tattoos are used to symbolise affiliation with the gang. This includes Nazi symbols, Viking tattoos and the infamous three-leafed shamrock containing 666. Members would be under strict training, not only a rigorous physical training structure, but training of the mind. They would read books such as The Art of War by Sun Tzu, The Prince by Machiavelli and Greek philosophy. They would also study anatomy to make them more efficient at dealing damage. They were also very secretive in their communication, such as using urine as invisible ink and writing everything in a ciphered code. They also had a strict moral warrior code. They regarded themselves as the elite of the elite of prison gangs, Spartan-like prison warriors, the ruling class of the prison system. The original Brotherhood ran as a collective, where every member had an equal vote on gang decisions. However, as the gang began to grow and spread out across America, a hierarchical, paramilitary structure of leadership was put in place. Barry Mills and T.D. Bingham would run the Federal Commission, and four members named Michael Thompson, Wendell Norrie, Clifford Smith and Richard Terflinger would run the State Commission. Those in charge, especially Barry Mills, would take an active role in masterminding the gang's activities. This included declaring war against the DC Blacks in 1997, which led to the death of two members. The gang would begin to fracture as some of the original moral code was overwritten. In retribution to snitches, the AB started to attack the family members of them. Some of the old school believed this to be morally wrong. There also seemed to be too much infighting. Too many orders from the top would come down to kill one of their own. Sickened by the new rules and the forsaking of the warrior code, Michael Thompson left the gang and began cooperating with the police. The AB became a business, running the distribution in the prison as well as a protection racket. Even John Gotti paid protection money to the Aryan Brotherhood. They would use girlfriends and wives as mules as well as manipulating staff to bring in contraband. It is now estimated that as many as 20,000 members of the AB are present in the US. This is largely on the outside, as members on the inside is still tightly controlled. On the outside, they operate a mafia-like structure of criminal enterprise by using illegal money to fund legitimate business. Bizarrely, giving the racist roots of the gang, the AB are partnered with the Mexican Mafia. They work together inside and outside to control the flow of pharmaceuticals largely of the crystal kind in the US. The AB also act as hitmen and enforcers for the Mexican cartels. No prison gang is more deadly or more ruthless than the Aryan Brotherhood. Blood in, blood out. On July 2018, Barry Mills would die at the age of 70. However, the gang shows no sign of slowing down and remains America's most deadly.